Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Telecom video, we're going to have a small update concerning Vega, also known as either the 490 or possibly the 500 series, because it, uh, AMD have not actually formally told us the naming convention of the upcoming part. Now, the GPU is somewhat of a mystery. As we all know, there have been a few sightings of it, both officially and unofficially, either at the New Horizon event or at leaked press footage and then of course we've also seen various leaked benchmarks but the GPU as a whole in terms of the specifications other than a few leaks here and there remains very much a closely guarded secret. On top of all of that we don't know the release date. Now hopefully we can at least get a release date uh, in January which of course will represent CES 2017 but what we can tell you is that the customer variance of these cards is definitely getting closer. And we know this for certain because of the RRA. So the RRA is South Korea's National Radio Research Agency. And any silicon-based electronics must go through that agency and get a stamp of approval. This stamp of approval basically indicates that the GPU or whatever device, be it a microwave or whatever, anything that's got silicon in it essentially is not going to blow up and harm someone or put out dangerous frequencies or interfere with you know radio traffic or whatever basically that it's safe for the hands of the average person and it won't cause any damage to other equipment so what this means when they have this certification process is that the chip that is submitted to them just inherently must be as close to the final design as possible or the final design because think about it let's say it's like 70% through the uh, through the design of the chip they're not going to approve that for sale when there's still something that you could tweak as a manufacturer and oh sorry you know blown up the toaster next door that just doesn't make sense now I admit that does not give us a release date but what it does do at the very least is give us a good indicator and what's very interesting about this as well is that there is another entry which clearly indicates Polaris 12. Now Polaris 12 we did talk about just yesterday so I don't want to harp on about it too much but it looks like it's even lower end than Polaris 11. So clearly at the moment AMD have a couple of weaknesses in their GPU lineup. One is the bleeding high edge, which would be something along the lines of a GTX 1080 or higher, and also the really low end cards. They've got the 460, and one can argue that yes, it's not going to put out like 10,000 frames a second on the latest games, but it's not super low end and it's not super cheap. So that's where AMD definitely need to bolster their offerings. So, with that said, them putting out these two cards is probably a good sign. So we, what we have here is the D04001 and the C90603, which is a bit of a mouthful. Sticking to the C9, this is most likely Polaris 12. I don't want to, once again, harp on about Polaris 12 super amounts because I realize for many of you, it's not really gaming orientated or GPU that you're going to aspire to own. However, what we do know is that it didn't get its certification until the 9th of December. That's pretty clear. Now that does indicate, at least in theory, that the chip is not so far along, or hasn't been at least so far along in Vega with development. That does make some sense, but it also doesn't necessarily indicate much because it's also a simpler piece of silicon to produce. What I mean by that is that it's most likely going to take less engineering power i guess you know there's there's less parts in it there's less there's less room for screw ups and errors than let's say a high end card for vega let's make the assumption it's got hbm2 of like 8 gigabytes there's much more chance something could go wrong with those in large quantities than let's say Polaris 12. I'm obviously just speculating that i don't have inside information always need to make that stuff clear however with the what we presume to be the Vega part, it is most likely the 490 or what we presume is the high end. Now, the reason I keep saying presume is yes, Vega is definitely in the works, and obviously, we've seen it at New Horizon, but one cannot forget the um, Polaris 10 XT2 entry. Now, XT2 would at the very least indicate that there is a dual Polaris 10 part. 
Don't forget, it can't be any higher than Polaris 10 unless, you know, they've engineered something different. And I don't think they're going to go higher with the Polaris Silicon. So either, my theory is that either the 490 is a dual Polaris, uh, 10 based GPU, or the other option is it's Vega, which it's a bit of a mystery. All we do know is it most likely has 8 gigabytes of RAM thanks to a huge amount of leaks that's popped up. The Doom demos did show 8 gigabytes as well, but that was running on Vega. So whether Vega is the 490 or not, well, fast forward a couple of months and we'll probably have the answer, unfortunately. I know that's not particularly helpful to me, but I'm being honest with you. I don't want to sell you bullshit. Now, what we do know about the uh, D04001 is that typically this naming convention has not been seen. Whereas the C9 has been used in Polaris cards in the past, D0, at least as far as I'm aware, has not. So it does, at the very least, hint that there is a new card in the works. What does all of this mean? Well, it's a bit tricky, to be honest with you. I mean, at the moment, there are no entries about this in Zuba. And we also don't have any, like, leaks of sometimes, for example, a, a couple of weeks before something goes live, you do get the odd uh, chap who has a card that, especially in China, where a lot of the stuff gets manufactured or whatever, and it's a lot easier to get hold of the engineering samples or early uh, production samples of the card. Sometimes what happens, like, for example, with KB Lake, some dude will just randomly get one and it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, he's got one. It's it's uh, happened early in the uh, retail pipeline. But we haven't got that in this case. So we can make the assumption that they're either not producing them in volume and it's basically just they've taped out the design. The design is final and they're just making tweaks. It's also worth noting that final physical design is not necessarily the same thing as the card is finished because for example what and I did point this out multiple times so I won't go over it too long but we do know that the drivers that were used in New Horizon were not final and multiple reports and a couple of little birdies uh, supposedly AMD engineers told a couple of reporters stuff they shouldn't and some of the stuff that they were told, and I don't know how much stock you want to put in this, obviously it was certain websites are reporting this, and you know, they were told by AMD engineers, some of the engineers got it wrong. There is obviously always that room for error, but let's assume it is true. The actual the actual drivers themselves were Fiji drivers. And that obviously is a very good indicator that the drivers were very old and they still require a lot of tweaking to get to the point where they're stable and high performance enough to be released. Now, you might say to yourself, well, gee, that's not a big deal, right? I mean, who cares if, you know, the drivers, they can they can release drivers whenever they want. They can, but let's just for the sake of argument say they release a card and then three weeks later they release a driver which improves performance by, I don't know, I'm just throwing out a number, 20%. The problem is the reviews have already gone up and the word of mouth has already gone up for the 20% uh, lower performance. And then it's very hard to 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 beat that. So it's better if they get everything in the row. And I do have a feeling, and this is once again me being presumptuous, but I do have a feeling that AMD are definitely getting their ducks in a row because the Relive driver, which I did review, is definitely a large improvement. And it's obvious... There, there were cert certainly some criticisms that could be levered at the RX 480 performance because of its drivers. I mean, now, the RX 480 is actually slightly faster in some applications than the GTX 1060, and the two cards are essentially neck and neck. Whereas before, when the 1060 was launched, um, it actually had a distinct advantage over the RX 480. So in other words, the 480 has like clambered up a bit in the performance ladder, so if AMD had gotten those drivers really solid before the cards release, it probably would have meant 
something a little bit different for a lot of folks who are recommending you know what the 1060 is a little faster even though the 1060 did come out a little later there were a great many of individuals who were just holding off and just thinking well i wonder what nvidia are going to counter with because that makes sense right if you don't need a graphics card then and there it's good just to wait a month or two so anyway i think i've talked a bit too long on this particular subject uh it's kind of turned into a more ranty opinion -y thing rather than actually anything informative so i think i'll you know quit here while i'm ahead hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now